These are our 12 tips to survive the transition to RV living. It doesn't matter if you are a family of five, a couple with a dog, or just a solo RVer. These are 12 tips that we have to help you survive that transition to an RV lifestyle. Communicate, communicate, and then communicate some more, but make sure you do it well. Oh, and communicate. Good communication is the key to surviving RV life because you are in a very small space and especially for us, we're in about 90 square feet now. And if we don't communicate well, it puts a lot of stress on our relationship. It does. This small space turns into a pressure cooker. And if you're not able to talk to the other person and release some of that pressure, it's going to explode and it's not going to be pretty. You don't want that to happen. <laughs> I would say when we transitioned to RV living, that first month on the road, now we were in a class A motor home, which was significantly bigger than the van. A lack of communication put a lot of stress on our relationship. Yeah. Well, the thing is we went from working full time. So we only saw each other at nights, mornings, and on the weekends. And then we go into RV living and we're around each other 24 seven. It was a huge change and we really needed to communicate better with each other so we knew what was going on and what was bothering the other person. Have the right gear. By bringing the right gear with you, whether you're in a camper van or a Class A motorhome, makes the difference on most road trips. Now, I will say, having an electrical management system is essential for just about anyone. The last thing you want is to be at some campground enjoying yourself and there's a power surge and all of the components in your motorhome go out. That's gonna be a costly trip to the RV dealer to have fixed and you could be off the road for a long time. So make sure when you get out there to carry the right gear for the rig you have and the trips you're planning on taking. To see our must have gear for RV living, head over to our website at wertherussos.com. Know your RV. Whether you have a big class A or a small camper van, it's going to come with lots of manuals for every component in your RV. We have an entire bag filled with manuals for everything in this van, from the Ram ProMaster chassis that this van was converted on, to our cassette toilet, and everything having to do with our battery and solar system setup. It's important to read through every manual that you get you know exactly how everything works. The last thing you want is to be woken up at 1 a.m. with a fuse that's gone out and it's pouring rain outside and you have no idea where the fuse box is. Our first class A had four fuse boxes and luckily Joe knew where all of them were so that we could troubleshoot any issues that cropped up all hours of the day. And one tip I have is to try to find all of your manuals online and download them as a PDF. That way you can search through each manual for something specific that you're looking for. Spring cleaning. It can be very difficult to figure out all the things that you want to bring when you transition to RV living. We had that challenge when we moved from a home to a class A and then down to the class B. So every once in a while, go through all of your storage compartments and make sure everything you have in there is essential for RV living. What we like to do is check all of our storage about once a quarter and reorganize, optimize space, and get rid of things that we no longer use and need. We have a storage bin in here that we easily just toss trinkets into, and before you know it, it can start to overflow with items that we thought we needed but we actually never use. So get in the habit of going through your storage cabinets and getting rid of stuff that you no longer need. Do we need that rock over there? Speaking of trinkets. Hey, I picked up this rock at the Bay of Fundy and it's come in quite handy. I'm keeping it. Share the drive. We've put over 50,000 miles on our motor homes and let me tell you, it's a lot easier when your partner is willing to share the drive with you. Now this van is like driving a big SUV. It's easy and it's a lot smaller than the larger Class A motorhomes. I know those Class A motorhomes can be very daunting for someone who's never driven one before, but there are classes you can take to get more comfortable 
or just take the Class A out when there's less traffic to get comfortable using it. The more you do it, the more you'll enjoy it. And let me tell you, when we pull into a campground and Kate's behind the wheel, I always have someone come up to me saying, Joe, I wish my wife or my partner drove the motorhome too. Those long journeys, having someone else share the drive with you makes life a lot easier, especially when I can sit in the passenger seat, enjoy a cup of coffee, a snack, the scenery. It's pretty nice. Have a checklist. After driving down the road, chores flying open, things flying off the counter, we knew it was time to put together a pre-departure checklist. We had one for our Class A, we had one for the Class B, and we keep that checklist on our phone and we check it every time before we hit the road. And one of the first items on our list is checking the tire pressure to make sure our tires are properly inflated. So whether you have a Class A motor home, a tow behind, a truck camper, develop a checklist that works for you. It will prevent a lot of headaches, I promise. To see our checklist, you can head over to wherethetrussos.com. Everything has a place. In such a small area, it's vital that everything you're putting away always goes back into the same place. For example, our Berkey. This is the perfect place for it. We have a strap, we tie it down. Every time we're done using it, if we move it, it goes right back here. The same goes for all of my coffee gear, our cooking stuff, a bottle of vinegar. What we found is if things don't go back into that same spot, they tend to get moved around. And even in such a small place, it's easy to lose things, trust me. If someone takes a bottle of vinegar and they stick it somewhere it doesn't belong and we're going down a bumpy road, that bottle of vinegar could bounce out of that spot and break. Things like that do happen in a motorhome and that's why everything has a place and that thing always goes back to that place when you're done using it. One in, one out. This rule is essential if you want to prevent a buildup of stuff in your RV. And this rule applies to books, clothes, and anything else you might be bringing into the RV. We started practicing this rule when we transitioned to RV living and I've taken it as far as one in, two out. Just because you have storage for something doesn't mean you need to fill that space. Expect the unexpected. Whether it's a flat tire, broken windshield, or severe weather, always be prepared. The last time we were in Florida, we got hit by a terrible thunderstorm and a tornado that touched down nearby. We were prepared, we had bags ready to go, Leah was ready and we were going to head to a tornado shelter. Luckily the weather passed and we didn't have to do it, but we were ready for it. Anything can happen on the road, so it pays to be prepared. Expect the unexpected. Be flexible. And I don't mean that kind of flexible. Be flexible with your travel plans. Although it's nice to book reservations in advance and sort of plan out where you wanna go and where you wanna be, it's nice to have the flexibility to change those plans, stay a little bit longer if you really enjoy some place, or leave early if you're just not feeling the area. The way we like to travel is we don't make many reservations. We like to roll into a city, feel it out, stay for as long or as short as we want, and move on. And a lot of times we'll meet locals who give us recommendations of other places to check out. And having a flexible schedule gives us the freedom to roam and discover new places that we never knew about. Have a fun fund. When you're traveling on the road, put some money aside for those once in a lifetime experiences that you see and you've always wanted to do. For example, want to go for a hot air balloon ride? Go for it. That's what your fun fund is for. When you transition to RV living, it's gonna be a lot more enjoyable if you have some money set aside for those things you've always wanted to do. When Kate and I get into a new city, we always try to find things that are inexpensive or free, but there are times we'll dig into the fun fund. One of those was when we went to Walt Disney World, we camped at Fort Wilderness for a few days and went through the park. It was an absolute blast and it's something we still talk about to this day. And our final tip is, Enjoy the journey. That's the reason you got on the road in the first place, to enjoy the journey. So make sure every time you get on the road, you're striving to do that. And I would say that is the most important piece of advice that we have for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed our 12 tips to survive the transition to the RV lifestyle. 
If you would like to see a full list and more tips on RV living, head over to our website, wertherussos.com. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye.